Hello and welcome to another inspiring episode of 700 Club Nigeria. One thing every child deserves is some level of security, a home, a family, and all that comes with it. Faith had all of this, but never imagined that one day she would become a maid and a stranger. Here's her story. Growing up was quite difficult. We were so poor, parents were so poor that each time you come from school, you have to go hawking through the city, then you come back in the evening, no time for homework. You just hawk every day. At a point, I see about 17, I lost my dad and could no more go to school. And I was now, an auntie promised to help. Came to the village and took me to Lagos. And I became a house help. Faith Ayedogbon worked for years as a maid. And although she was grateful to have a job, she wanted something more. I wanted them to send me to school, but that just did not work somehow. And I became, I saw, each time I saw my friends, my mates going to school, I became very sad. During that time, Faith discovered she was very sick with severe stomach pains. I was sick, I had peptic ulcer. Doctor described it so, I never knew what that meant. I was always falling ill. And mine was so serious that sometimes if it comes, I would be so weak, or lie down rolling on the ground, crying. A man in her neighborhood kept approaching her, inviting her to come to church. I saw him coming. I hated to hear about Christ. I couldn't fight him. I couldn't resist him. I was scared because he was far, far older than me. But I didn't. I was. I hated what he says. That there's no Jesus that could help you, that could heal you, that could deliver you. I wasn't in for that. So I saw him coming, and I went hiding behind a big tree. But one last thing he said that Jesus is a healer. He heals. It delivers. I immediately said, I remember I had us. My mind is, you mean you can heal this sickness? I didn't see anything, but I didn't even tell him I was sick. And I said, okay, I'll come. Curious to find out if Jesus was real, Faith went to church. However, the people she worked for were unhappy to discover where she had been because they practiced a different religion, so they locked her out. I became very hungry as I about 8 midnight, 8, 8 p.m. that night, I had to look for somebody, some people, please come and beg my mom. I need to go in. So I started looking for some of her friends and they went begging her. She now allowed me in. By the time we got in, she opened the door and I was happy because I was so hungry. And she said, he asked, she turned her back and asked a question, will you go back to that church again? I said, like I was, I stated. She said, I repeat, will you go back to that church again? I said, no, 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 no. I said, okay. The moment I said, no, I won't go back to that church, I lost my peace. I got upstairs, I couldn't eat anymore. I came in because of food, but I can't come eat. I was restless, I kept hearing a voice, immediately I said, no, get out of this place. And I looked behind me, nobody was there. Nobody was talking to me. But I kept hearing that voice. You can't fulfill your destiny in this place. You need to get out. You can't fulfill your destiny in this place. You need to get out. I kept hearing those sound, those voice, the voice consistently. And I said, okay. And on the third day, early in the morning on the Wednesday, I took my things, a few things I could get put together. I started going. Now the question is, where are you going? With no money and no place to stay, Faith left the house and ventured out into the unknown. The only thing that could satisfy me at that time was just about God. I remember some of the days they would be going for evangelism. I don't know what to say. I will follow them. When they are talking, I will be looking at them. <laughs> As they are preaching to the person, I will call him blessed. I was so hungry for the Lord. A couple at the church gave Faith a place to stay and she committed herself to studying the Bible. Eventually, she was hired to work at the church full time. Yeah, I've seen grace, I've seen God. For instance, my life is a testimony in the sense that I came not knowing where I was going, but today, God has, given me, God has made me a beacon of hope to many. Looking at me and hearing my testimony alone, I think many people have come to Christ. 
believing and hoping for better days ahead of them. Now, uh, I've seen God work, but I said, I told you I had sickness when I came to church. I can't find that. I don't like I'm, It's gone. Faith also fulfilled her dream of completing her education and now co-pastors a thriving church with her husband in Abuja, Nigeria. The Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can get to the Father except through Jesus. And there is no other name given under heaven which men should be saved. I believe if you trust in Jesus, your situation is definitely going to change. He's the only one that can change difficult situations. He's the only one that has absolute answer. So Christianity is what you can put to the market. You can test, tested and tried. It doesn't fail. I've been in this for 25 years, and I can tell you that Jesus is real. Oh, wow. Amazing. 25 years, and she can testify that Jesus is real. Yes. You know what this story speaks to me? That God has a plan and purpose for everyone, and no matter what it takes, it's going to get fulfilled. That's very true, mm. very true. Amazing how God brought her. Mm -hmm. Imagine what took her back to that house didn't even satisfy her. She right. lost her peace without God. That just shows that there's a vacuum in every man that needs to be filled, mm -hmm. and God filled that vacuum. Mm -hmm. And that is where you fulfill destiny. That is where you get your life straight and do that which God had put in your heart. Amazing. As always, we love to hear from you. Your phone calls and messages are constant reminders of why we do what we do. So go ahead, drop your comments on our, or questions on our Facebook page or any of our social media handles. And yours may be the next we'll discuss on the program. Don't forget to like and follow us while at it. Susan? Thank you, Angel. Now, Esther says, I have been living with a man for 18 years now. Mm -hmm. And right now, he doesn't come home often. He no longer takes care of me. I honestly do not know what to do. Wow. <laughs> That's a tough one. That's a big question. Mm -hmm. 18 years, living with a man. Mm -hmm. Uh, that means they are not married. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is what I'll say to Esther. First of all, reconcile with God. Mm -hmm. You're not married to this man. You've been with him for 18 years. So that's a sin. Reconcile with God. And the next thing she should do is get the families involved. For her to reach out to us, it means that she wants something to be done about the matter. Bring your family. Bring his family. Get them involved. Let You guys should start to talk about the next level, what mm. to do about the situation at hand. Mm. For me, I don't, I don't and, know. And you know, 18 years is a long time to mm. be invested in someone without yes. a formal commitment. Yes, you yes. Know, and you know, the marriage runs on principles. And True. once those principles have been violated, there are consequences. True. So I really feel that in order for her life to get back in order, mm. she should follow those principles, mm. which is like do the right thing, get it formalized, and the blessings of God will be upon that home. Amen for her, yeah. amen for amen. her. Amen for her. Still to come. He took away everything I had. 700 Club Nigeria will be right back. Welcome back. Truly, only God is able to do much more than we can ask or think. Remember this next time you feel down or frustrated. Don't let the picture that the world paints be cloud what God's word has promised you. Angel? Up next is the heartfelt story of a man who was forced to make a choice that would change the course of his life forever. Take a look. He took away everything I had. He broke me to nothing. Bishop Mike Laju is a well sought after visionary leader and a seasoned agent of peace, change and empowerment in Nigeria and abroad. As a young man, he was part of several outreaches conducted in the rural communities. And on one of such outreaches, God spoke to him. The first thing I heard was, I have called you out into ministry to fulfill my will. 
And when you get back home, tell everybody you've been called by the Lord. Mike's parents were not pleased to hear this. The hope to see their son become an aeronautic engineer was dashed. But Mike Laju was undeterred. We're using uh, one of the house of our members there. And we're just about five, six fellows. Men and women began to come. They came from all over the place. And the work grew in speed with the blessings of the Lord. We had grown to almost about a thousand membership. At this point, Mike had all that he wanted. But unknown to him, his heart had drifted far from God. I was no longer walking in his perfect plan as in total obedience to his voice. I found out that I started staying more with the people that God sent me to than the God who sent me to the people. And I became famous amongst the people and I wasn't any more famous with God. I heard the Lord say, I should hand over the ministry to the next man who was working with me. And he asked me to hand every other thing I had in life, properties, clothes, furnishings, everything. And he took me out of circulation for two years just to teach me humility and to teach me what it means to be in his presence. After learning all that he needed to and more, Mike Ladrew got back to teaching and preaching the Word of God with the right attitude. That was the greatest of all turning points in my life. Soon, time came for him to get married. God said to me while praying several times that in the day you see your wife, I will tell you and you will know it. The minute I saw her sing, the Lord spoke evidently to my spirit that she was the one. And I got in touch with her and the story of a relationship began, which was consummated in a holy wedlock. Everything was as it should be, but Mike and his wife realized something was missing in their lives. I kept telling my wife, you're gonna have children, not to worry. God's timing in this matter will be made manifest. It's uh, at times heart-wrenching when your expectations are not fulfilled. What gave me hope was the word of the Lord, that there shall be none barren in the land. Mike Ladji was advised to adopt a child. He shared the news with his wife and she held no reservation towards it. My wife bought into it and her spirit clicked with it. My wife was the one that went after it, after the process. And when that child came, you would not believe the joy that came into my life. From the very moment I carried her and she rested her head on my shoulder, I was a fulfilled man. I knew the Lord had settled the matter. Five years after adopting their first child, Mike Ladge's wife, Misan, conceived and birthed a set of twins. Their joy knew no bounds after 21 years of marriage. A year later, they had their fourth child. But shortly after, his wife passed on. I was devastated. I was um, completely broken. When will God take her home at a time such as this? To me, it wasn't the best of times, but to God, He is the one who is the Lord. And I resolved not to question Him, knowing that it is He who sends us to fulfill purpose, and after we have fulfilled our purpose, He calls us home. Mike Ladju drew strength from the pain he experienced and learned to keep his trust and hope on God alone. When a man is far beaten and broken by circumstances that are beyond him, he needs a help that comes from above. Nothing means anything to me anymore. Not the crowd, 
not the fame, not the money, not the popularity. It is Him, the Lord, that means all. That's amazing. <laughs> deep, a deep, deep life there. Very deep life. How God brought him, how far God had brought him. And one thing, or the first things he said, God separated him. He started paying too much attention to who God called him to mm -hmm. instead of the God that called him. And it's important. That just shows that we have to be led by the Spirit of God. Pull back to God always and refresh ourselves. God has brought him from a mighty long way. Absolutely, mighty long way. Yeah. absolutely true. And yeah. in spite of all the pain that he went through, yeah. God still had a plan and a purpose for him. It yes, was all in yes. the perfect will of God. Yes, it's amazing yeah. that even pain is not supposed to stop you from doing what you're supposed to do for mm. God. Amazing God story. Is awesome. amazing. <laughs> amazing, amazing story. Amazing. Now, Bishop Mike Laju heard the call and he heeded it. It definitely wasn't an easy path, but he trudged on, he pushed on one step after the other, trusting in the one who called him in spite of all that he went through. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24, that the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Only the assurance of this sure word must have kept Bishop Mike Gladue when the furnace of his life was turned up 100 degrees. Mm. Stepping out of the light of ministry for a while and hiding in the shadows of the secret place, waiting for the promise of having children, losing his beloved wife at the peak of it all, he went through that, but he held on because of the one who called him. There are many voices beckoning, us to, beckoning to us today, but there is the voice of the one who will stand by you and see you through the tough patches. It is the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's calling you today to heed his call and let him lead you. If you pray with me, he will come into your life, he will make all things new, and he will walk you through. Say this prayer with me if you're willing. Now pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for my life. Thank you because you know all things and you work all things for your good and my good. I ask that you forgive me all my sins. Come into my heart today. Forgive me of my sins. Make me brand new. Change my life and let me experience the love that only you can live. Mm. Give me a purpose and let me walk in it. Let me hear your voice and let me walk in your purpose. Thank you for answering me this day in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. It's that simple. It's really that simple. And I want to assure you that you have done the right thing. Rest assured that God has got you. He has your name engraved on the palm of his hand. In other words, you have nothing, absolutely nothing to worry about. Now, don't go away because if you do, you'll miss an amazing story of expressions of love and hope. We'll be right back. Awesome. We hope you've been having a great time so far. It would be nice if you just hear from you. So why don't you go over to our Facebook right now and drop a comment or tell us what you enjoyed the most about today's episode. Absolutely true. Please comment, tag your friends, and spread the joy. And one of the things we love about social media is the opportunity it gives us to get to know you, our awesome viewers, more as well as the chance to give you up-to-date information of the latest happenings right here at the 700 Club Nigeria. Speaking of updates, the 700 Club Nigeria is bringing Telethon to your mobile screens. Telethon is a live-streamed online event where we air stories of changed lives. And you, our dear 700 Club partners, made these changes possible by your little contributions, just as you change the narrative of the women in our next story. Find out how. Who can find a virtuous woman? She works willingly with her hands. She brings her food from afar. 
With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard, just like the women at Pampida village. The women of Pampida toil day and night, working hard, all in a bid to earn a living. Yet, they do it all with joyful hearts, in spite of the difficult conditions. Martha was selling palm oil, but she was barely making enough to make ends meet. When CBN heard about the women of Pompida, they decided to step in by providing sewing materials and empowering some of the women to become fashion designers. One of these women is Martha. They trained her to sew and gave various sewing materials to her and other women in the village. Now, Martha can take care of her family. I am so happy I can sew now. I even sometimes sew for free. The joy that I have learned a new skill is enough for me. We are so happy and grateful. Thank you, CBN. God bless you. What a beautiful life-changing act. A great relief for the women of Pampaida and a rewarding sacrifice on the part of our sponsors, our 700 Club partners. Thank you for touching these women where it mattered most and for many other impacts you give through your prayers and your constant financial contribution. And if you're not yet a partner of the 700 Club, we encourage you to join us today. If you're wondering how, it's quite simple. Give us a call or fill our online partnership forms. Mm. And you know, take note that uh, these details are on your screen right now. Then make a donation of just 500 Naira and voila, you're in it. We look forward to hearing from you. God bless you, Angel. Wow, I think it's safe to say today's episode was truly inspiring. With the stories of faith and Mike showing us how God does work wonders mm -hmm. and that he uses men most times as shown in the stories of the women of Pampida. Simply amazing. Amazing indeed. And this day, this week, let these words be found, let these words which are found in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 to 21, be your guide. Mm. It says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more yes. than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be all the glory. With God, there are no limits. God bless you.